we would like to have the panel discussion. Since uh, the start of the program, we heard presentations uh, from uh, uh, key, three keynote speakers, uh, including uh, Mayor Baba. Professor Yoshikawa talked about the roles of scientists uh, in time of crisis. In normal time, in peacetime, uh, there is a division of labor amongst uh, scientists, uh, uh, and they go on discussing matters. But uh, in time of crisis, they have to be united in order to overcome the uh, challenges coming from crisis. That was the point of uh, Professor Yoshikawa. In that context, uh, scientific advice uh, should be capitalized uh, by the uh, political initiatives. In order to do that, uh, there has to be an evolution of communication between the two parties. In order to promote that uh, communication, intermediate organization he calls a science advisor, science advisor, an office of science advisor is something that he is suggesting. And also, he has emphasized the importance of a think tank. Then Professor Dr. Miranda Shiraz gave her presentation. After the accident in Chernobyl, uh, it had a certain impact on uh, German society. What kind of impact uh, did uh, Germany feel? And how did it impact in Germany various uh, ways of reacting to accidents? Based upon that uh, fact, uh, then she talked about uh, Fukushima accidents, uh, furthermore impacting the German society. Professor Dr. Miranda Shiraz uh, said uh, is a member of the Ethical Committee for the uh, Safe Supply of uh, Safe Energy, which, which is headed by Chancellor of Germany. In that uh, Ethics uh, Committee, uh, she was involved in reviewing the German policy, which uh, ultimately would lead into the pathway to the uh, economy and society based upon uh, renewables. So she gave an elaborate account of uh, what went through in German community. Also, she mentioned that in that context, uh, in particular, various kinds of people were communicating. And uh, this communication was of uh, utmost importance, uh, he, she mentioned. In Germany, one, there was one issue she mentioned. That is uh, the uh, uh, substantial proportion of uh, electricity generated by uh, burning coal. Also, in coal mining areas, uh, there is a challenge of uh, rejuvenation and reconstruction of the ecology there. Then we had a presentation by Mayor Baba. Within the context of a nuclear accident, he talked about the lack of information, which uh, produced various issues. Uh, and he uh, gave us an elaborate account of how information did not reach Namia town. Also, he talked about the basic stance uh, uh, on reconstruction. It's not a question of go back or don't go back. Uh, the p highest priority given to the protection and insurance of uh, life and livelihood of the town as a home for the residents through the health management, uh, health, through the uh, improve, um, improving uh, infrastructure, not only creating safe society, but the society that can provide a peace of mind, sense of security would be very important, he, she, he mentioned. So in this panel discussion, bearing in mind all those uh, points uh, spoken by the keynote speakers, we'd like to uh, have a meaningful discussion. The title of uh, this uh, symposium is uh, Sharing Information and Communication toward the construction uh, of uh, Fukushima. And there is a subtitle, From the Viewpoint of Human Security. That is the subtitle. United Nations and uh, other international community has heard the Japanese uh, proposal, and thereby uh, there is an emphasis on human security, the freedom from uh, fear and the freedom from want and the right to live with dignity. Uh, that is uh, the uh, principal uh, element of uh, the concept of human security. Up until now, this concept uh, 
would be applied to the conflict uh, with uh, regions in developing world. And the human security was used as an important principle in conflict uh, uh, regions. In our case at UN, UN University, the anthropogenic artificial disaster should uh, apply the human security in order to gain the dignity as a person's living. So, th And uh, this time, the disaster is a composite disaster. Uh, it's a combination of a natural disaster and uh, artificial or anthropogenic uh, disaster. Unfortunately, it happened in the Japanese society. So even in such areas, the concept of human security could be applied. That's what we thought. And by applying this concept, uh, we will be able to find a pathway uh, in this region toward the resolution of various problems, uh, helping the people who are suffering and tormented by various problems. Uh, we thought that the human security could be sort of a beacon of light in helping the people in the disaster-stricken areas. So the promotion of communication, as well as the assistance for the construction in these uh, two areas, uh, human security could be applicable, could be of some use. So I would like you to make some reference to this uh, basic notion for the uh, security of man, uh, of people, the communication and sharing of information is something quite indispensable. We would like to uh, uh, reach that conclusion. Now then, to the panelists, uh, by way of uh, introducing themselves, I'd like uh, to invite them to speak. First of all, I would like to invite uh, Professor Tanaka of Tokyo University to speak. Uh, Professor Tokyo is the chairman of the Nuclear uh, Energy Soci Science Society. And since the accident, uh, he has been squarely facing with the question of the uh, responsibility of uh, uh, scientists. And he is uh, involved with the decontamination works of uh, Fukushima Prefecture. So I'd like to invite him to talk about the scientist's role. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Tanaka. We heard from Professor Yoshikawa about the mission of scientists. I'm chairman of the Accident Investigation Committee of Atomic Energy Society of Japan. And on the 8th of March, I am to make the final report. So how scientists should function, how societies of science should perform. Those are things that I would like to put together. So after the 8th of March, I would like to make that a public uh, report. And I'm also working as a decontamination advisor to Fukushima Prefecture. The method of decontamination, radiation impact, as well as communication efforts. I'm working together with the people in the prefecture. I have been having dialogue with the people, but the very important and difficult thing is communication. There are many failure cases, many, many failure cases that I have experienced. We're trying to make improvements based on the past mistakes, but it's very difficult. I would like to uh, speak to you on the same level as you do, rather than uh, getting on the podium like this. But uh, this, since this is how the uh, this uh, conference room is arranged, so I will be speaking from this podium. But three years after that accident, we have to think about the next three years, how we will work in the next three years. We need to work very hard. And the central government has to understand that as well. On the 20th of December, the government has put forth a report call, called Towards Acceleration for rebuilding, but not just such reports in, and documents. We have to make steady efforts on the ground. Today, is a symposium is with the angle of human security, sharing of information and how communication should be conducted is the focus of today's conference and work being conducted in rebuilding Fukushima. I'm not an expert in this area, but uh, if I may share with you some of the thoughts that I have been keeping recently, and then I would like to get engaged in the panel discussion. I come to Fukushima uh, about uh, five times uh, a week uh, to Fukushima. Uh, there are many misunderstandings I may have about Fukushima. So if you find any misunderstandings on my part, please point that out to me. 
Here is the slide talking about what other things that should be done going forward. I have um, made some modification to the plan made by the Reconstruction Agency, rebuilding of um, uh, livelihood environment and the public infrastructure development as well as public services to be provided. The second point is revitalization of industry to support the region as well as generation of jobs and rebuilding of lives uh, in coordination with the situation of evacuation. This is very closely linked to uh, countermeasures against radiation, including decontamination, uh, fine-grained monitoring, health management, measures against uh, health anxiety. And we also need to have the mechanism, the framework to promote all these initiatives. It's not just these four points, but uh, at Fukushima Daiichi plan, the commissioning uh, work must uh, progress steadily. That's another point that I would like to point out. With respect to decommissioning effort at the secretariat uh, meeting, I'm providing some technical advice. Communicating with the local people about the situation is not going well, so I'm pointing out the importance of communicating with the local residents. So this is the four-point program that are to be worked on, but the ba at the basis of this is the impact of radiation. We see this diagram quite often, a diagram, diagram like this one you might see quite often, but the sufficient explanation had not been provided. And that is why there is there are so many anxieties about radiation amongst the public. We feel responsible for this. So how can this be explained to people? It's rather difficult. This may not be an appropriate way of saying this, but uh, people who are versed about radiation may speak as if they are experts just because they know a little bit of knowledge and they may say things that are not true and that led to misunderstanding on the part of the people. So we have to look back on what went wrong in communication and we should continue to provide scientific explanation to the people because I don't have a lot of time. I've just uh, uh, provide some supplementary information. You may not have this in front of you, but this is a, a, a small group uh, inside um, Atomic Energy Society of Japan. And, we, and whenever we go to uh, Fukushima, we always make sure that we use this PowerPoint so that there is no misunderstanding about the impact of radiation. The society, uh, science, uh, uh, Atomic Energy Society of Japan has to make sure that uh, true information be provided. This is a case in India, cancer survey in India, and the amount of radiation uh, that people were exposed to at the atomic bombing, such scientific data. This is These are facts. This uh, scientific data should be the basis to say what is known and what is not known. We have to explain this thoroughly to people and protection. There's the issue of protection. Radiation protection is a different concept than radiation uh, impact. Uh, these were oftentimes confused. Of course, they are, not everything is known, but uh, in the case of 100 millisieverts, 0.5% is the increase in the risk of uh, getting cancer. But this is from the the concept of protection. This is a science as well. So we need to have thorough discussion, but there was not clear explanation and separation of understanding between protection and impact. These are things that we need to continue to convey. Our ultimate goal is one millisievert per year or less. That's the ultimate goal. But toward that goal, what can be done? This is something that we have to continue to think about. We have to continue to explain to the people, to gain the understanding of people. This is a steady effort that must be made. These efforts must be continued to make improvements. So this is just one conclusion that I would like to submit to you. Under the existing exposure situation, what are the choices that we have to make? Who makes those choices? Well, residents as well as municipalities are in the position to make these choices. What are the choices available? Of course, there are anxieties about radiation, 
and people want to go back home quickly or some may hesitate to go back but they want to have a gl glimpse of what is happening on the ground and we heard from the mayor that uh, rather than saying whether they go back or they don't go back dispelling anxiety is important safety of people is important so how can we have an optimal situation where we can mitigate anxiety as much as possible but at the same time we can motivate people that's this balance is very important these are two sides of the same coin you have to have a good balance between the two to make progress forward so government support is important but at the same time you need efforts to be made on the individual level. There has to be good coordination between the two. So the criteria for radiation is going to limit uh, uh, what can be done. So you have to really take into consideration what are the wishes of people. Of course, you cannot eliminate anxiety, but we, have, we can uh, reduce anxiety to the extent not to demotivate people and uh, local contamination level as well as radiation those on the individual level should be grasped by the government as for individual radiation dose decontamination work is to be conducted and in that process individual dosage level is going to be re uh, measured we have to work on this as if this is happening to us ourselves so victims and the government's choices and consensus form formation has to be supported by good communication. But uh, if government's uh, rebuilding efforts is not able to com uh, t deal with a complex situation because of imposing temporary regulation, if people's uh, actions are restricted and if people are demotivated from rebuilding, that is a situation that we have to avoid. So the central government as well as local governments must come at a reasonable point and respect the freedom of um, uh, action on the part of uh, uh, individuals to make sure that uh, certain rebuilding work can proceed. With that, I would like to conclude my initial remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. He mentioned the community as well as individuals. A lot of anxieties are shared by these people. That has to be ameliorated. At the same time, the life and livelihood of the locality must be supported in terms of reconstruction. In order to do that, case by case, uh, appropriate uh, selection must be made as well as consensus uh, formation must be made amongst uh, involving um, uh, different kinds of people. And to such efforts, uh, solid data must be provided by science, which will help people make judgment. I think that was the gist of the presentation. Next, I'd like to go on to Professor Suzuki for his presentation. Professor Suzuki is the professor emeritus of Fukushima University, and he is a senior fellow at IGES as well. In the course of uh, uh, reconstruction, he is the chairman of the uh, Fukushima Prefecture Reconstruction Committee, and he also uh, is a leader for the reconstruction of Namiya Town. Professor Suzuki, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. First of all, Rector Malone and the people from UNU, uh, I'd like to thank them for giving me such a great opportunity. You heard Mayor Baba's speech. I've uh, known him all along, to be honest with you. Two years and uh, 11 months uh, is the length of my acquaintance with Mayor Baba. During this time, gradually, nuclear disaster, how draconian the disaster is. The uh, gradually, accurately, should I say, the people are beginning to feel the uh, tough aspect of the uh, uh, accident. In the beginning, we can go back in two years after decontamination. That was a uh, uh, objective uh, in the beginning, but as a matter of reality, decontamination technique may have been very rough or delayed in decontamination. Not only that, um, not only that, 
the uh, nuclear disaster is so draconian. That is the perception which has settled down firmly amongst uh, the hearts and minds of Fukushima residents uh, with the passage of time. Listening to Mayor Baba's pre speech, I really felt that. Conversely, what about the people outside Fukushima Prefecture? You are worried about the withering of the uh, uh, accident. So the very tough aspect of the, ac uh, the accident. With the passage of time, are you deepening your idea about the uh, seriousness of the uh, accident? Or is there a gap between the uh, psychology of the uh, prefect uh, Fukushima residents and those people outside Fukushima residents? So I really felt the gap. So the first thing I thought about this is this. Normal times, uh, no, uh, tsunami or earthquake damage like this, this is uh, the uh, natural disaster. There are evacuees, so evacuation life must be supported. And then the rebirth of uh, homeland or the hometown. So these two challenges uh, would uh, uh, become less and less uh, with the passage of time because evacuees uh, would go back to their uh, birthplace uh, or the home that they call home. So this is the process of re reconstruction. And usually um, the emergency evacuation, various life supports, uh, those happen, infrastructure upgrading and so forth, one after another the challenges would come up. But in the final analysis, it will converge into the rebuilding of uh, the uh, community as a home. But then there was a nuclear accident in addition to natural disaster. And as I show you, as time goes by, the accident, nuclear accident, nuclear reactor uh, itself uh, has to be debated for the resolution of the situation or called shutdown? What about uh, the uh, compensation, indemnification? What about the decontamination? Problems uh, crop up one after another. You, you see, in the earlier uh, picture, it will converge into the regeneration or rebirth of uh, hometown. But uh, in three years' time, the evacuation support continues, and we don't know how long this continues, and uh, whether it will converge into the reconstruction of uh, the uh, community as home. Nothing is known. I think this is uh, the characteristic of this di disaster this time. So in this uh, nuclear disaster, evacuation, evacuees, evacuees uh, uh, must be supported and helped. And it's a big theme, how we can help evacuees. We must confirm as we proceed in the whole process of reconstruction. Of course, there are additional challenges like indemnification, compensation, um, and a decommissioning would be another challenge. So assisting the evacuation as well as uh, the reconstruction of the homeland or a place they call home, and then the containing of the accident uh, have to be pursued in an appropriate way, considering that uh, this uh, disaster poses us a very wide-ranging and long-lasting challenge to all of us. So once again, we will have to go back to the cardinal point uh, in discussing how we can draft uh, the uh, local or regional reconstruction plan. When the, what should be the state of mind or frame of mind to uh, face uh, the uh, issues of reconstruction? I have noted several points. In this disaster, the uh, disorder of the emergency response uh, was a serious problem and lack of communication. Mayor Baba seriously talked about it. So there are seven municipalities evacuated. In the beginning, nine municipalities evacuated. When, where, and, and how would they evacuate? In a way, the mayors and the village masters were pressurized to make his or her own decision. And there was no sure information. Everybody was groping in the dark. And another feature is uh, the damages on the areas uh, which were suffering from depopulation and aging uh, to start with. Uh, so the reconstru reconstruction was very much constrained because of this uh, uh, sociological conditions. I will skip uh, other points. This was uh, a case of Namie town, as explained by Mayor Baba. So radioactive plume uh, direction and uh, the initial evacuation direction of citizens were the same. And then they were evacuating furthermore, and they went this way. And that itself uh, 
as he showed the same graph, green shows the uh, temporary housing distribution of Namia citizens. Uh, and uh, uh, another co other colors are other citizens. So you can see how dispersed, how uh, dispersed the Namia citizens uh, were evacuated. And since then, the contamination activities uh, took place. In eight prefectures, actually, there are plans for decontamination. It's not only Fukushima, Iwate Prefecture to Chiba Prefecture. There are plans of decontamination. It's a grandiose, uh, grand uh, plan necessary to decontaminate. Furthermore, there is one fight against the, it is the intermediate storage place. Uh, all, uh, altogether, nine places planned, Futa, Futaba Okuma, Naraha, these are the places, and they are along the national route number six uh, on a plain field, on the plain land. They, these were the places where townships existed, and then this is the uh, nuclear power plant, and uh, 40 years will take place uh, until they complete the decommissioning, and uh, inter intermediate storage facilities would take 30 years. Would they be compatible with the uh, city building of these areas? These were towns and cities, and intermediate facilities are going to brought to this area. Namia is to the north of this, but intermediate storage facility uh, is are going to be there, and then the colossal amount of uh, contaminated waste would be carried by dump trucks, and Namie uh, would be passed by those uh, trucks. Uh, what are the conditions? A lot of anxiety will be uh, shared by a lot of citizens. So this is wh what is happening in actuality. And one more point I want to do. I want to talk about from 2012, we began the project Fair Do Fukushima Action Research on Decontamination Operations. European researchers also joined, and they were interested in decontamination, three challenges there, but since then, various interest points developed and evolved. Now, as of now, as we speak, what we are suggesting is that toward better decontamination and recovery in order to have good, better consensus uh, formation. Common f uh, information must be shared upon common platform. And also, we have to establish a community round tables at each municipality's uh, experts, administration people will mm, join in. In this round tables, we call it the Kurumaza Kaigi in Japanese. Uh, it's an uh, experiment, uh, round tables. Uh, uh, citizens, uh, experts, and uh, administration people will join in this effort. So uh, these are the challenges uh, we are faced with. Uh, uh, looking toward the reconstruction, we will sort out the challenges so that we have to make a consensus. In order to do that, we have to support people's lives and livelihood, and we have to support revitalization of the societies and uh, economies. So we have to have the help of the experts. We will have to have the round table opportunities where everything is discussed. This uh, mechanism did not exist uh, in the past, but this is going to be the common challenge faced by all communities in Japan. Fukushima should take the initiative to lead that. Another point. In order to have a smooth operation of the roundtable meeting, we must have the information platform of common information. Prefecture, central government will help this initiative, or and working together with the local people, we want to create this information platform. That is what we want to do. Later on, Yuri will talk about this. In Ukraine, he has a, a certain experience, which is uh, which may be common with our experience. This is Europe. This shows you the international cooperation on nuclear disasters. If a disaster breaks out uh, from the nuclear power plants, uh, the radioactive uh, disasters in time of contingency, how they are going to uh, respond. This is the network. In Europe, uh, these number of countries are cooperating for a disaster. So if a disaster breaks out, uh, government and the municipalities, what kind of information sh should they transmit? And what should be the... Uh, programs to counter the uh, disaster. There is a uh, well-advanced research. But uh, in Japan, there is no such accumulation of uh, advanced studies. And uh, then these programs still go on. So that is the anxiety I have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Suzuki. <coughs> Earthquakes and tsunami, compared to these natural disasters, 
radiation disaster is very severe, extremely severe. So a different pathway must be followed for reconstruction and rebuilding. And uh, what is important in that context? Well, we need to have um, a platform for common information sharing. And in addition, in local communities, you have to have a round table. According to Professor Suzuki, we need to have a round table in the local community so that the long-term rebuilding ideas uh, can be formed as a consensus of the local community. Now, next speaker is um, Mr. Yuri Kushinarov, first secretary from the Embassy of Ukraine in Japan. He's going to talk about cooperation between Fukushima and Chernobyl. We will hear about the current status of Ukraine as well. So, uh, yes, the floor is yours, Mr. Kushinarov. Thank you very much, uh, United Nations University and I just for taking up this opportunity to speak about post Chernobyl experience of Ukraine. I hope that today's short message from uh, Ukrainian's representative will broaden your knowledge about Ukrainian's ability and competence, awareness to help restore Fukushima. Uh, we are Ukrainians from uh, took the nuclear accident. Uh, Ukraine took the no nuclear accident in Japan is our own tragedy, and uh, we felt committed to side stand by side by side with Japan from the first days of accident and feel obliged to be in Fukushima in the years to come. All Ukrainians know that Japan was first of the uh, f one of the first countries who provide assistance to new independent state Ukraine. And in 25 years, in 25 years, Ukraine was one of the first countries in the world who provide humanitarian and delivered humanitarian aid to Tohoku area. And I would like to emphasize that Ukrainian governmental uh, Preparedness to continue providing technical, expert, and humanitarian assistance to Japan based on practical experience of Ukrainian authority and expert. I would like to underline practical experience, not theoretical. Worth noting that the fact that since March 11, around 40 Japanese delegation visited Ukraine to explore and study Ukrainian's experience. By the way, mentioned by Rector uh, of UN, uh, Kenzo Oshima Konimsir visited Ukraine twice. At the same time, around 20 Ukrainian experts were invited to Japan to share experience and knowledge. And Japanese delegation have been convinced that unique practical experience expertise of Ukraine could be extremely useful in Fukushima and possible solution uh, to identify challenges and create possible solution for recovery of Fukushima area. Uh, Ukraine uh, has significant achievements and skills on solving uh, consequences of Chernobyl disaster and uh, some directions, uh, especially in uh, Chernobyl decommission, uh, safe decommission station and uh, management with radioactive waste and spent fuel, radiation protection, research and estimation health, uh, risk management, and also psychologically and social uh, monitoring also uh, disactivation agriculture fields and monitoring uh, radiation food. Uh, but I would like to point uh, the main result of Chernobyl Forum 2005 that experts absolutely agree that the most significant long-term effect of Chernobyl disaster are social and psychological. 
uh, among mention of team uh, achievements of Ukraine, I would like today uh, noted about um, Ukrainian know-how about uh, centers of, uh, for social and psychological rehabilitation of the population and its public information about the mitigation of the Chernobyl catastrophic consequence long term. But anyway, uh, we so-called uh, centers for social optimism. During 1994, 2005 centers were established in Ukraine uh, in supporting UN Chernobyl program and Ministry of Emergency. The main, uh, the main missions uh, of centers to unite communi local community, business, scientists, and its efforts to uh, develop uh, and achieve goals for social rehabilitation and psychological rehabilitation of affected population. Uh, the main direction of center you can see on the side activities, the main centers is psychological, social, and legal support affected population. Ensuring the human security, development of cooperation between public and government, researchers and business, and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, many programs and special uh, projects were established specialist in the centers. You can see this, some of them and uh, group and individual consultation for affected citizens. A special uh, was established uh, hotline of trust, uh, lectures for teachers and doctors, uh, consultation. Uh, special uh, information uh, population through website, newspaper, TV, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Many programs and physical activity. Uh, on this slide, you can see special uh, needs or information uh, requirements of uh, citizens uh, who would like to, uh, who can uh, get answer for more, more concerns in this center, one of them in long and short term for radiation effect on the health, they can get information about places where to undergo medical examination, get rehabilitation or how to keep housekeeping and social benefits and compensation and many, many other requirements and needs. The main defined results of activity, center activity, is that uh, the main result is considered that centers is, is a reliable and trusted organization in uh, sources of information about uh, safety living and healthy activity on contaminated area. Uh, also increased awareness of nationality about risk health, dose radiation, monitoring food, and something like that. Prompt response for local authority to possible social problem. Have a positive impact to overcoming crisis and social development of communities. Uh, also centers expand awareness of population on social and social consequences after accident of Chernobyl disaster. During 2011-2013, uh, uh, around 25 Japanese delegation visited centers, especially in uh, Korostan and Slavutish city, and they took interest in most important question, whether local people trust the information prepared uh, specialists provided in centers. The, um, I can see on the slide faces you may know each of the Japanese delegation. And answer on the, this slide, number of participants centers in 2012. You can uh, we know that huge amount of citizens and around an average 20 employees in centers uh, provide helping. Uh, Japanese delegation uh, consider um, five main direction to create center in Fukushima. Uh, you can see on the slide the main direction who promote 
and creation center in Fukushima. Uh, the uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian uh, expert and employees of centers would could help and provide special consultation and work as expert in Fukushima to establish a center in your prefecture. Uh, you are welcome to visit social and uh, psychological centers in Ukraine and Gambate Kudasai. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Yuri. Uh, he talked about the uh, various programs and projects in Ukraine after the accident, and also he uh, talked about uh, the uh, connection as well as the sharing of the sympathy uh, of uh, a Fukushima disaster. He also talked about the possib possibility of humanitarian assistance, bearing those in mind in Chernobyl, Ukraine, the greatest problem, he said, is a social and psychological damage suffered by the residents. In order to resolve these problems, there has to be an effort and basis for the reconstruction of something lost and damaged. And the center is necessary in order to restore those lost factors. And in fact, in Ukraine, such center centers are created and proper and appropriate information is provided to the citizens. And such center could be created in Fukushima. And Ukraine would like to render cooperation regarding such initiative to create such center in Fukushima. Now, Professor Dr. Miranda Shuros, you gave uh, your uh, uh, keynote address already. So, Miranda, you belong to Ethics Committee. It's called Ethics Committee, the title of the committee. Ethics Committee, it means a lot. It's not only the uh, physical impact uh, assessment uh, uh, committee for the option of the future energy, but rather than that, uh, as a society, as a whole, it's taken up as a matter of ethics to discuss uh, the transition toward new energy. I think it was quite characteristic of your endeavor. That fact, as well as the uh, slogan or the principle of human security. If you connect uh, these two, uh, it's going to lead us to something very important. Uh, so can you talk about it? Ethics committee was made. What was discussed? And then this time, what are the things that we can learn from your activities? Can you talk about it? So this time, uh, you can speak in Japanese. Thank you. I will try my best. Let me see. Human security can be approached from many different uh, angles. In my area of expertise, global warming was a major topic. And in that context, uh, we pick up the uh, topic of uh, human security. In the whole world, there are a plethora of problems, uh, global warming, biodiversity, and then next to that, the acidification of uh, ocean. There are so many problems, but uh, they are all the consequence of uh, modern economic activities. When it comes to energy, uh, of course they exist as the backdrop of environmental problems. So energy system has to be reviewed. So that is the thinking which uh, was emphasized in Germany and it happened even before Fukushima accident. We had to see the whole energy system. After all, when we consider human security, economic regime has to be reviewed and revised. We must discuss that. Global warming is uh, becoming very serious. So coal and oil from those uh, resources uh, we must uh, change uh, the basic uh, uh, regime of energy. Coal produces uh, CO2. So China, India, Brazil, they are going to grow going forward. Thus, uh, the global warming uh, will become even uh, exacerbated. 
from coal, we have to change to something different. It's very important. But in Germany, as I explained in my keynote address, nuclear safety was an issue that a lot of people discussed. Nuclear energy could be made safer. It's, it's certain. But in Japan, we did, uh, in Germany, we didn't opt for that. More safe means do away with nuclear energy. That's what we thought. Ethics committee was formed. Be because of, from ethical perspective, how can we look at the energy regime, energy system? That was the basic question that was posed. So ethical aspect, why ethical aspect is related with energy to begin with? Energy is something that we use uh, every day for our lives. And based upon that energy, our livelihood is created. Hitherto, we didn't think so much about the impact. In this energy system, we didn't think much about impact. Current uh, energy system is related with the global warming, with the use of nuclear energy. We have a problem, serious problem, nuclear waste. Uh, no country has resolved uh, these questions yet. So ethical problems uh, would arise in this uh, whole gamut of problems. Uh, so even considering the global warming or considering nuclear energy, if you think of next generation, we are just passing, uh, passing our problems uh, to the next uh, generations. We, we will be doing injustice to the next uh, generation if we don't resolve those problems in our generation. That's one point. Another point is the fact that we belong to a developed nation. So we are using various resources, oil, coal, and plutonium for that matter. We are using a lot. And um, to many other countries, it is not a united world. It is not a fair world where we use a lot of those resources compared with other countries. So we must uh, have more unity where everybody can achieve uh, safety in the equal manner. So economic regime has to be changed uh, to that purpose. That was the sense of purpose we shared. In Germany, since some time ago, we experienced Chernobyl problem in various uh, localities. Uh, natural energy, renewable energy experiences uh, were accumulated. So if energy is naturally derived, then we can do something about it. 25 years ago, 10 to 15 percent would be the proportion of renewables. But at that time, we thought that 20 percent was not possible for renewables. But in today's numbers, 25 percent is already accomplished by renewables. So what we discussed is that in a country where 25% is uh, coming from renewables, at that time when we discussed it was only 17%, but anyway, we can have so much uh, from renewables. In a country like that, maybe we can achieve 100% uh, from renewables. We began thinking about it. Ethics Committee is thinking that safer economic system must be created, and in order to do that, energy system and energy uh, regime has to be turned into something safer. Renewables and natural energy could be the best one to achieve that. We don't know whether it's the best, but we know that it is one of the ways to achieve safer world. Especially what we discussed in particular was that if we change the energy system, then not only energy, but the societal system, social system would be changed. The policy decision-making methodology could be changed. In the past, uh, energy uh, system was at the center, and therefore major corporations uh, would dictate uh, where we would go into the future. But if uh, natural energy is going to be the center play in the economic system, then after all, different localities, different communities would uh, be impacted, uh, uh, can impact uh, the uh, option of where they go. In order to improve democracy, e one opportunity is to rethink energy system, we thought. 
We went through various uh, discussions at Ethics Committee. We watched uh, uh, the disaster in Japan. We looked into various problems in Japan. I believe that uh, Japan needs to think uh, in the similar vein as we Germans did. More than Germany, uh, Japan has a very tough uh, natural situation. You have earthquakes, you have uh, tsunami, typhoons uh, regularly visit. Hurricane, yes, we do have uh, rarely, but uh, in terms of natural conditions, natural disasters, uh, Germany is very much blessed. So in a way, uh, Japan has more problems compared with uh, uh, Germany. So you should rethink your future. You should think of how you can create your future system, how you can create a safer system. This is an opportunity for you to think about it. Fukushima accident uh, is indeed a very serious and severe accident. But because of accidents, a lot of people left Fukushima. Considering future, you don't think of the people who left or who died, but uh, you can start something in Fukushima and you can create something new, something new system, something new regime. That's what I believe. In order to enhance the level of uh, Japanese democracy, this may be a good opportunity. Community-based approaches and discussions can take place. In this process, you think of what kind of society you can create. So new system, new regime can come out of your efforts. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that. In the Ethics Committee, the matters that were discussed in the Ethics Committee was shared with us. Taking the tack toward renewable energy means that it's not just that the energy source would change from fossil fuels to renewable sources, but to support that, you need to change the structure of the society itself. And what that means is that community, the regions, would be the center of creating societies. And that is the challenge that we have to take on going forward. So in that sense, you have given us, uh, or this um, uh, event is giving us a great opportunity to structure a new uh, framework for the society. Thank you very much for that discussion. And we have gone uh, the first round of uh, initial remarks, and let's go to Professor Tanaka. In your discussion today, physical impact and social impact or psychological impact, uh, there are these different impacts, but the latter, the so uh, psychological impacts, uh, importance is quite large. That is what we have heard uh, from the panelists. So in that sense, Professor Tanaka, your expertise in the area of, um, for example, future return, the target level of uh, radiation doors for people's return to the area, as well as, uh, as opposed to that, people with small children, those people have uh, their own psychological problems. How do you strike a balance between the two to try to approach these issues going forward? How should we approach this? Or how can we proceed to form a consensus? Uh, this may be a difficult issue, but Professor Tanaka, can you address this? Uh, it was a very difficult question indeed. I don't know if I can respond to this question properly. Uh, psychological impact is not my area of expertise, but at my university, engineers and scientists, when it comes to nuclear energy, we are aware that uh, there's the contact with the society, and we do have that in mind when we provide education on nuclear power. Engineering and science, as an expert and as a specialist, how much do we know and what is not known? That has to be considered, and at the same time, what are the things that people are interested in? What are the things that people are worried about? We have to understand that fully, and we have to do this with consultation. And after we understand what people's anxieties are, as from a scientific, uh, technical standpoint, we have to provide good information. So social literacy is important. 
in scientists and engineers. And as was asked about what the level should be set for radiation, that's a very difficult question indeed. How much is known and how much is not known? When we have things that we don't know, what is the standpoint of ICRP? That has to be explained to the people so that ultimately it will be the people who will make the decision in the end. This, we should not force people to accept our proposal. People have to be comfortable with the decision that they make. Uh, it's easy to say it's a trial and error effort and to try to make small ev uh, pr uh, progress forward. That's what we need to do. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Suzuki. I have a question. Earlier on in your slides, uh, you talked about the disaster taking place uh, amidst uh, uh, aging with low fertility. In disaster-affected areas, uh, ahead, uh, beyond the decontamination, there is a question of repatriation and uh, community building, village building and town building, and aging uh, with low fertility goes on. In this situation, what are the things that people should think? And uh, in combination with the renewables, uh, what could be the combination from the position of uh, urban planning? Can you uh, make your comment? Thank you. Just like uh, in the case of uh, Namia town, uh, eight communities of uh, Futaba affected areas. As I have been saying, uh, population is decreasing substantially because of the disaster. The In the case of Namie data, please be reminded of the numbers. As of now, the out of 21,000, 18.8 percent of the people, only they want to go back. Then the rest of the people judge that they can't go back or they don't want to go back, 37.5%. And then don't know group, 37.5%. So 18.8% uh, is the basis for t uh, village building. Then in terms of uh, population, it will be something like uh, 2,500. You have to start planning with that scale of uh, population. That will be the minimum line for the village building. For uh, T community building going forward, agrarian area and the city area where job places are, there should be a commuting uh, between these two areas. That must be the lifestyle. Even only in a, a home that used to be, that can't be the uh, only place uh, for building a life or livelihood. You have to at least uh, uh, discuss that. There is uh, various problems. Uh, uh, with a depopulation. So the city center of uh, regional cities uh, are in critical situation rather than the agrarian villages. The agri uh, agrarian villages, uh, people uh, have nature. They have an environment where they can stand up. But uh, in city centers, uh, what would remain in this situation? I'm worried about that. It means that the town center population and the village centers or fishing village uh, populations, these should they, they should have a system of mutually supporting one another. And that system is called Japanese version compact city. Well, when you say compact city, you think that we are only, only concerned about the uh, town centers. But if you think of the local cities, uh, around the cities or towns, uh, there is a vast agrarian uh, communities. So you have to have an organic connection between the town center and the agrarian communities uh, surrounding. But I can't force upon the residents uh, about this concept. So as I said, there are 37.5% of the people who can't make up uh, his mind. So if this proportion increases, uh, it's going to be very serious. Uh, these people are uh, have anxiety, and uh, there are there should be options. There should be uh, options with certainty as well as uh, the uh, future image. There are no options available as of now. The repatriation to your homes, uh, that was the major uh, mission. So those people who can't uh, go back, uh, they will not be able to take that alternative. Then they live elsewhere. They want to rebuild their livelihood. There are jobs. There are workplaces. Uh, there are all sorts of anxieties. So they have all gaps. So new options uh, must be increased in provision to these people. Uh, 
otherwise uh, those people undecided uh, the proportion will not go down so the options that should be provided so you say this is the best solution then everybody follows uh, upon uh, imposing upon the best solution. But the problem is that uh, looking into the evacuees' uh, situations, situations are so different. While they were not able to repatriate to communities, uh, things have happened, and uh, uh, they have become so different in terms of situations. So you, we have to consult with them, and we must uh, mutually recognize uh, each other's positions. It's not one option, only solution. Uh, we have to uh, go by go with their uh, people's uh, thinking. We have to do very elaborate work. Thank you very much. As we think about building our societies in the future, rather than forcing people, but rather proposing and giving options to the people is important. And one of such options is that now that we have aging and depopulation, urban areas and rural areas must work together to create a compact city-like uh, community. Now moving on, and let us go to Mr. Kushinarev. Earlier, you talked about the experience of Chernobyl, and based on that experience, what can be done in Fukushima? You talked about what can be considered in Fukushima based on the Chernobyl experience. Now, conversely speaking, at UNU, what we are working on is that how can we offer and convey the experience of Fukushima to the international community? The importance of Fukushima experience is being considered by us. So in that sense, Ukraine or Chernobyl experience, how can you, how did you communicate the experience of Chernobyl to the rest of the world? And what do you think Fukushima should tell the rest of the world about our experience? If you could share with us your thoughts. Um, after the large scale of disaster, governments usually concentrate uh, to technical uh, consequences, like uh, technical and technology decommission or monitoring rehabilitation and deactivation of territory, monitoring food, and et cetera, et cetera. But um, as a rule, little attention is paid to transformation, uh, social uh, activity, population, affected population who live in a contaminated area to uh, and social and psychological rehabilitation. And unfortunately, psychological rehabilitation of affected Ukrainians were missed, was missed after Chernobyl. And my message, don't mi repeat uh, our mistake. And uh, let me, um, let me, uh, if you don't mind, Chairman, let me express a proposal. Maybe somebody from audience, uh, audience visited uh, one of the center in Ukraine and can share uh, an impression face to face uh, visit in Ukraine, if you don't mind. Yes, please. Ask auditory. Oh. Maybe somebody uh, visited and from Japanese. Ah. Uh, I am from Fukushima Chernobyl, Chernobyl Exchange Association. I belong to this association. Mr. Yuri, with the support of uh, people from the embassy in Japan, last year we went to Chernobyl and toured Cherno uh, Fukushima re building. I went to the region called Slav in Slavjici, and we, talk, we heard about the psychological center as well as schools, kindergartens, uh, nuclear power research institute, as well as atomic energy research institute, radiological institute. We talked to the people there as well as municipal centers. We went there to conduct some surveys and we were able to come into contact with the people there. Now, we're talking about toward rebuilding of Fukushima, and there's a question that I have in my mind. I have some questions about the direction that Japan is headed. Looking at Slavtichi, uh, I had a question. Slavtichi, 
There was a town with a 50,000 population. Prichachi was transformed into a new city called Slavutichi, and 25,000 people are living there today. So over a 27-year period, after 27 years, people who used to live in Prichachi, how many people returned? Interesting statistics. Only 20% of former residents returned. The rest are Kiev and Russia neighboring areas. People relocated to places of work in other places like Kiev and Russia. And people there always say, what is evacuation? Evacuation is only temporary evacuation, and you're not uh, uh, making any progress. Relocation, building a new town, resettling there, that is what uh, restoration and rebuilding is all about. It's not just passage of time. Isn't Japan wasting its time? That was the question that was raised. Life is limited in time. After a three-year period, you have just wasted three years of your life down the drain. So when you talk about long term, in 20 years' time, people who don't return in 20 years, what are they living for? That was the question raised by the people in Ukraine. So we have psychological anxiety when we think about this, that loss of time. So Yuri talked about places or where consultation, psychological consultation is provided. I realized the importance of such centers providing consultation, psychological consultation to the affected people. In Japan, when we talk about rebuilding, we only talk about evacuation. Radiation exposure is the focus of our attention. But people who are evacuated today. How are they going to live the rest of their lives? I don't think enough focus is paid on the lives and the livelihoods of evacuees. That's what I felt going to Ukraine. Slavutichi is a dream town. They have a hospital and they have schools that are integrated from elementary school to high school. They have five such schools and four kindergartens. And there are even vets. It's a dream town, Slavtich. It's not just barracks. It's a beautiful uh, place. Uh, you have uh, detached homes as well. So please uh, make a point of visiting Slavtich if you have a chance. Thank you very much, Mr. Kshinaliv. Uh, do you have any additional comment? Is that all right? Yes, sure. I I hope that in Croatian, uh, the people who, uh, person who face to face visited the uh, center was uh, surprised for you. And uh, I would like to add that uh, negative, uh, negative experience of Ukraine and extensive system of compensation and benefits for population would not, who were not real affected will provoke and destroy community and uh, economy of state like Ukraine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Miranda, in terms of international communication, you gave uh, your example in Germany and uh, you talked about uh, Japanese example, particularly uh, example of Fukushima, you talked a lot about that. So in that sense, uh, the promotion of the dialogue between the two parties, looking into the future, what would be the desirable way? Uh, what should be the communication to uh, aim at a better communicating uh, world versus Japan? Can you talk about it? When I came to Japan for the first time in 1980. I was the exchange high school student uh, here in Japan. So since I was very young, I was of the uh, opinion that international exchange was very important. I grew up with that idea. After all, Japan is a faraway country in the eyes of uh, Europeans. Asian matters are not known amongst the Europeans. Unfortunately, recently, 
the difficult aspect of Japan is known. Reading American newspapers, it's the same thing. The complicated, difficult things about Japan uh, are portrayed uh, well by the media, but there are many good things and favorable things happening in Japan. After Fukushima accident, everybody acted in unison trying to overcome the difficulties. If it happened in Germany, German people would not have acted so honorably. I doubt whether Germans would have acted honorably like Japanese or Fukushima residents. After Fukushima accident, I've been to Japan many times. This kind of symposium study meetings you organize many times. So the significance of Fukushima is being debated and discussed by many people. It's very important. When I go back to Germany, what should I do? What Japan is doing is something that I want to communicate to my German friends. After Fukushima, Jap Japanese people try to save energy. A lot of students came to Tohoku region to help. Volunteer activities were done by many young people. I want to communicate that. I communicate that to uh, my people in Germany. It's very important that I have this uh, cross uh, mutual uh, communication. Otherwise, uh, each other's image uh, would be uh, distorted. So exchange is very important. What we need in this regard is that uh, amongst uh, ver various groups, uh, we should organize a study meetings, symposia, meetings to consider the future image of the community. The there needs to be such meeting. Young people in Japan, I heard, are not going abroad. I think it is indeed very serious. Not good. Japanese youngsters not going uh, abroad. You should go abroad, and then you should realize what kind of thinking, what kind of ideas uh, exist uh, in uh, foreign countries. Uh, Professor Suzuki talked about Fair Do Project. Uh, Fair Do Project is one example. This is an example of uh, after the disaster, what can be done? It's a study group, what to do about the decommissioning of uh, reactors. There is at least a level of experience internationally, but in Europe, uh, the disposal of waste uh, is something uh, which people are beginning to study. Also, the outdated uh, uh, nuclear power reactors, how uh, they should be decommissioned. With the participation of community, is that possible in decommissioning? We, people are beginning to debate. There are issues unresolved. So we should create a forum where people can get together and think about the possible solution. Thank you very much, Dr. Shuras. Now, I'd like to open the questions to the floor. Uh, we would like to accept your questions or comments. If you have a question, please uh, state your name and, if possible, your affiliation as well. And if you have a question, please let us know to whom you're asking that question. Uh, person in the back, please. Yes, with your hand up. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm from Koryama City. My name is Aida from Soka Gakkai. I have a question for Professor Miranda Shiraz. Right after the disaster, many evacuees spread around Japan to evacuate. And in many places, evacuation centers were opened and there were relief supplies sent, and many volunteers came. So Japan as a whole were connected with a strong bond. So Japan was unified right after the disaster. But compared to that, recently, TEPCO's compensation matter came up in Namie and other Tomioka uh, city were classified into three zones. And just across the street, the amount of compensation is greatly different. People envy living on the other side of the road because of higher compensation. And Koryama City, Fukushima City, Iwaki City, in these cities, there's hardly any compensation money to be paid by TEPCO. So 
affected people are treated too well. That is the ironic view held by certain people. So whether you get paid compensation or money or not, and whether the money is high, the level is high or low, even if you're the same Fukushima resident, people feel differently and there is separation. There is no longer unity. And you talked about the importance of community. So in order to uh, overcome uh, this uh, uh, division amongst the people, what can be done? Psychological division amongst the residents. Uh, uh, Miranda, it's a difficult question, but can you tackle it? Yes, it is a very difficult in question indeed. Communities that are divided and dispersed, there are no longer communities. That's the concern. And compensation in, when inside the community, there are differences. Then different views are held by the residents of the same community. So the current problem and how do you lead a life going forward? There are differences there, but dispersed communities. How can you bring back a community? I think you need to create the vision and proceed forward. That may be the best way forward. Yesterday, we had a chance to talk with the community members, evacuees. We spoke with the evacuees. And some are saying that uh, they have come to realize that they can no longer return back to their original home. Maybe a new town would be created. And they are looking more brighter. They have a, now a positive outlook. They may not be able to go back to their original home, but as a community, they're if they are able to create a new community in a new location, and if that becomes a good community, then that is a positive outlook. If it has proper facilities, then that may be the second best method. You cannot go for the very best because you may no longer be able to return back to your original home. So maybe you can have as a vision your second best scenario so that the new community could be rebuilt. There's maybe such a possibility out there. Maybe not now, but 10 years down the road or 15 years down the road. Fukushima could be a new model and there may be people coming from abroad. A beautiful town to be created in Fukushima where all people can live with peace of mind and you can restore your pride after a crisis if you have the right vision you can achieve great things if you can do that then the community's uh, mindset people's attachment to community may be rebuilt and come together there are too many people without a vision today but once you create such a vision then if you know that you can relocate together with the rest of the community, then there could be the motivation to work together and be united. Thank you very much. This person on this side, first a gentleman and then a lady in front. So in that order. Tsukuba University, as well as Nagoya Management University, I used to teach. Takashi Miyazaki is my name. Professor Tanaka, Professor Suzuki, I have a question. Well, Japan has uh, Hiroshima, Nagasaki, where atomic bombs were dropped. And this time we have a, a radiation accident in Fukushima. And during, in between, we had the accident in Chernobyl. Nagasaki, Hiroshima, regarding these uh, incidences, Without our knowledge, people began living there. People began settling there. In a short span of time, citizens came back and uh, citizens returned to their normal lives. That's what I feel regarding Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But why, in the case of Fukushima, or the same can be said about Ukraine, how come the repatriation is delayed by this much? I want to find out the reason for that. Per annum, 10 becquerel or 20 becquerel, that would be the standard, I suppose. 
but the, uh, f uh, the rationale for that is clear. Uh, re uh, returning back to the affected areas in Japan, when it comes to animals, including the uh, cattle and uh, so forth, that they survive. There are not. Is there an example that uh, living uh, uh, beings uh, died because of radiation? Have you uh, made a survey about that uh, possibility? Can you uh, educate me? I think I have mentioned uh, somewhat uh, uh, in my PowerPoint uh, the impact uh, from Hiroshima, Nagashima, uh, Na Na Nagasaki, as well as uh, other places in the world. The difference between Fukushima and the Hiroshima, the atomic bombs, it's an explosion in one instance. It is the heat wave radiation, and that is uh, the uh, exposure impact. Uh, it's sudden. Of course, uh, the amount compared with the uh, uh, Fukushima, in the case of Fukushima, is very small. And uh, there was a contamination, but the biggest uh, impact was uh, from the instant uh, heat wave, heat ray radiation. That was the impact in Hiroshima. But in the case of Fukushima, cesium, in terms of cesium, inventory, about 10%, near 10% of industry. Iodine is the same thing. It goes out into the environment, contaminating the uh, surroundings. So from the radioactive materials, the contamination came, and the impact was there. So it's a completely different uh, situation between Hiroshima and the Fukushima. So when you think of the health uh, impact, in the case of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was just an instant uh, exposure. But in Fukushima, it's there. Radioactive uh, uh, materials are there. And there is natural decay, so it will come down. But for a long time, exposure uh, happens. So situation is different. Long time, long term exposure. Of course, of course, human bodies have an ability to recuperate. So you have to consider everything in a comprehensive way. Uh, Professor Suzuki, would you like to speak? According to the information I have, from a different angle, I'd like to respond to the question. In the case of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, radioactive materials. Uh, how much was there? And there was no information given to citizens. So in a visible way, of course, we can see the damage. But from the next day, the reconstruction work was done by citizens. They don't have information. So from the next day, they worked on reconstruction. How much uh, radioactive materials are there? There was no information coming from the government in the case of uh, Hiroshima. So there were many people who suffered because of the impact, the health impact of uh, radioactive materials, as you know, because of no information. So knowledge, information are not given, and therefore the reconstruction was accelerated. It's very ironical, but because of the paucity of information, reconstruction was accelerated. One of the experts and a member uh, our member, Mr. Tsutsumi, is here. So if I could ask uh, Professor Tsutsumi to make some additional comments. In the case of Nagasaki exposure to radiation, depending on topography, south, north, 12 kilometers. This is the maximum uh, recognized zone. And to the south, it's 4 kilometers. Why is it 12 kilometers to the north and south is 4 kilometers? There is the sense of inequality here in drawing these lines. That is because at the time of climate, as well as the wind at the time of explosion, atomic bomb explosion, and the uh, mountain and topography had to do with this. But uh, in any case, 12 kilometers, well, these are, even if you do not fall within the recognized area, people saw the explosion or felt this heat wave. There is the physical impact Physical impact has not been uh, confirmed in epidemiological survey, but there is a clear psychological impact. So the government has conducted this survey and uh, medical compensation to be provided to these people. That was the case. So at the time of uh, atomic bombing, people who underwent that impact and after that uh, atomic bombing, people who have relocated to the region after the bombing, uh, or people who left the place, their psychological status is better for the people who evacuated. So even 50 years after that bombing, you cannot definitively say that their psychological status has been restored fully. Thank you very much.
Then I think there was another question out there. Yes, please. Maeda from Tokyo speaking. Health impact, psychological impact, uh, finely uh, textured uh, monitoring, uh, very important. I think uh, it was mentioned by Professor Suzuki, Professor Tanaka. Fukushima is not ended. Fukushima accident is not has not ended. I think that's the way. Now, there is a private sector accident resolution committee, and they are saying that we should be prepared for the worst. I only saw it on the uh, website, on the internet. They are proposing the preparation uh, against the worst. We don't know where the uh, nuclear fuels are. The uh, fuels uh, may be melting out. Then the nuclear fission may be reactivated. That's the worst scenario. This may happen in Fukushima. That's what they say in this committee. So preventive measures, for example, the neutron um, problem should be uh, strengthened and so forth. There are various items. The uh, TEPCO uh, is not disclosing data uh, on strontium. So regarding such points, uh, who, in what way, is going to monitor what would be the best way, effective way for sharing the information, not limited to Fukushima or surrounding areas of Fukushima. Uh, I think uh, the Fukushima accident has not ended for these people yet. So if you have any ideas, I'd like to be educated. Professor Tanaka? Well, that report I have not uh, read uh, very closely, but of course uh, in the process of decommissioning the reactors, there is a certain uh, road map or the uh, concept uh, is there. And uh, there are cases uh, which may not uh, follow the uh, roadmaps. And of course, we have to be prepared for some unexpected uh, event like uh, recriticality. Recriticality would not happen. But if it did happen, I mean, how could they? Could we m measure? And if there is a possibility, uh, what kind of neutron absorbent uh, should be uh, injected and so forth? So uh, as a matter of reality, those uh, uh, things are w being worked. Now the uh, information on strontium you mentioned. In the case of Chernobyl, strontium plutoni plutonium surrounding area monitoring was done, but uh, it was measured because it was high. But in the case of Fukushima, uh, in uh, simulation, it's not zero, but it's very low value. It's not zero, mind you. So there is a possibility of non-zero. So going forward in at the site or near the site, strontium has to be measured and there has to be decontamination against that and contaminated waste uh, must be uh, thought of. I think we have to uh, work on that, that. So considering the possibility like that, appropriate place or appropriate uh, people should measure that and consider what we can do in the future. I think that's my answer. Well, it, within the site, within the site, of course, uh, it's not only TEPCO who, which can handle that. Central government will have to do solid uh, monitoring, observation. And if there is anything uh, that uh, we have to think, then we will make a comment to TEPCO, and then we will make them solidly measure. So it's not that we leave everything to TEPCO. Regarding the surrounding of the site, Going forward, regarding the contamination, we should improve the accuracy and sensitivity of analysis. And what is the amount measured? We must identify, and if need be, necessary measures that would be taken. One more person. Yes, lady there, please. I'm from Ida Temura. My name is Kanno Ana ui I'd like to thank the speakers for giving talks that will give us hope. But there's one question that I'd like to ask Professor Tanaka. At the Science Society, you may have many opportunities to speak. And when you explain to the residents, you say that you put together a PowerPoint. And asking people to read that PowerPoint, provide that presentation, make that presentation to people. But the villagers, what I'm moved is that uh, what I'm psychologically influenced is that uh, given the current 
situation of my family, I should return in this way, or what kind of life should we lead? We talk amongst ourselves in the family, so we are assuming that eventually we will return. And if we organize our thoughts together, the, there are scientists who say that there's no way we can go back to Idate Mura, Idate village with the current radiation dose. And there are some residents, villagers, who are influenced by that view and feeling anxious. So, and the media would exacerbate this situation. So how can we make use of the PowerPoint presentation that you made? How can we expect all scientists to speak with the same presentation material? Sorry, this is not a clear question, but if you could share with us your thoughts, please. Well, sorry that I didn't distribute the PowerPoint presentation. Looking at this PowerPoint presentation, I wish I could have one or two nights to explain to you thoroughly. And I said that the Atomic Energy Society of Japan is putting together this PowerPoint. That is because if each presenter talks different things, that would be a problem. So we thought that it's the responsibility of Atomic Energy Society of Japan's subgroup to stick to this presentation material and say nothing more. And making use of this presentation material, taking questions from the people to engage in discussion, that is what we wanted to do. And as we present this material, 20 millisievert would be a safe level, people can go back. That's not something that we would say. We would only provide scientific data, and the final decision is to be taken by the people themselves. Some people have said that uh, if you say, if you the scientists say this, then I can feel comfortable, or there are other people who are not convinced, but we're not going to coerce people to accept this. We will. We are prepared to engage in discussion. We just provide the data. I have visited Idate uh, village many times, and I have uh, spoken with the mayor uh, and the residents there, and there may be some things that we should do more. If you point that out, we would like to make further improvements. Earlier in Professor Yoshikawa's uh, uh, speech, it's very important that the scientific community would speak in one voice. There should be a thorough discussion within the scientific community, and you should put together one coherent conclusion that should be conveyed to the society. If each researcher, if each scientist speaks speaks with his own viewpoint, that will create confusion. That could be the cause, one of the major causes of the confusion that we are in. So I hope that uh, that would be corrected. And that is uh, something that we would like to work on in the scientific community. We have only five minutes or so. Professor Tanaka, you have spoken a lot. So in order, yes. Well. The communicating information, very important. Many people have referred to that, which is very important in my mind. Fukushima Prefecture and the uh, uh, minist uh, Environment Ministry has uh, created an information uh, plaza. Uh, I think uh, that information is a good place uh, where an information could be uh, obtained. Uh, Deputy Governor considered the uh, Environmental Creation Center, uh, which would be crea created by uh, fiscal uh, 2015, so I serve on the uh, chair for the preparation of that center. So uh, I would like to uh, take in all the views and comments uh, spoken today in my uh, work as the uh, chair. Uh, Professor Suzuki, at the end, I suggested the information platform. So how I evolve this idea concretely, well, of course, I have to nail down some uh, relevant factors. For example, uh, Environmental Creation Center run by uh, Fukushima Prefecture. It will be launched eventually. The way information is uh, provided from that center, we can say that uh, what is necessary from our perspectives, we have to say loudly what is needed. The Environmental uh, Creation Center may receive the monitoring result data and so, so forth. Um, 
but uh, it cannot become a mutual accumulation of uh, data. So this is the challenge. Uh, for example, food monitoring data. There are many problems, uh, compensation problem, uh, as well as uh, on cloud, uh, there are so much information, how they are to be bundled and it put into a consensus formation in the community. That is indeed the challenge for me, for us. Well, Mr. Kshnarev, please. Uh, last year, um, during official exchange meetings between our governments and experts level, Ukrainian side proposed to organize in Fukushima a special summer school. Uh, Chernobyl uh, experience for rehabilitation Fukushima. And uh, Ukrainian experts, uh, scientists, and governments uh, can visit Japan, deliver special lectures, and uh, create a workshop or seminar in Fukushima, supported by Fukushima University and Fukushima Authority. We would uh, uh, to rely on uh, efforts of local and central government for supporting this initiative of Ukrainian side and implement maybe in this summer special summer school in two weeks three weeks it is good opportunity to share experience and knowledge not only Fukushima at all on the world thank you the Miranda -san, Dozo. Miranda -san. Yuri just spoke about the program to which I agree wholeheartedly. Very important opportunity will come. After Chernobyl, Japanese people went to Chernobyl and provided assistance. Uh, but now Ukraine is uh, conversely doing some assistance to Japan, which is uh, very appreciated. As my last point, what I want to say is this. Japan is going through hardships. But Japanese people stand firm and uh, do tough jobs. Uh, when I was in Japan, I learned many Japanese uh, uh, cultural uh, uh, lessons. And then people will say, let's do it. Uh, let's hang in there and uh, let's uh, do our best. Uh, so I respect uh, that the mindset. Fukushima is, uh, had a very serious and severe accident. I know the situation is uh, difficult. But new and bright society could be created going forward. What can I do? I don't know. But if there is anything uh, that I can do, I certainly would like to do with pleasure. I will fly in here, and I'd like to have a discussion with your side. Little by little, Life in Fukushima is returning gradually to normalcy. So observing that, I am learning a lot in this process. So next time, if severe accident occurs, and it will occur eventually, so uh, Fukushima experience must be uh, conveyed to the rest of the world so that we can all together learn in this. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, we are getting very close to the time that we have to close uh, this uh, program. We had three keynote speeches, and we had a panel discussion. And we talked about important issues, such as the importance of sharing information or giving options to people to form a consensus, and also towards the future in order to proceed with rebuilding, we need to proceed with a new vision. So we discussed uh, various points from various viewpoints. As for the outcome of today's uh, uh, symposium, we would put together a document, a report uh, on this um, symposium. And also, we would like to disclose information on the internet. So if you have a chance, if you could look back on the outcome of this symposium through these means. The UNU is working together with IGES and NRA, Nuclear Regulatory Authority, is also providing assistance to our programs. Uh, this uh, Fukushima Global Communication Program is to be continued with this uh, support from various parties. And uh, in that process, 
we would like to engage in discussion with the people in Fukushima, such as this one. Uh, so we would like to continue to solicit your support. And once again, thank you very much for taking part in this program for so many hours. Thank you indeed. Professor Takeuchi, panelists, uh, dear panelists, uh, thank you very much. Once again, a big round of applause to show our appreciation to the chairperson and panelists. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with this, uh, we conclude the program of this uh, international uh, symposium, sharing of information and communication uh, from uh, Fukushima from the uh, standpoint of human security. Thank you very much for your participation for so many hours.